What if I explain innovation to you in just a couple of minutes? So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Patrick Stahl and I teach leadership and self-leadership. Now, innovation is kind of both. I'm going to use the, the starting point of Clayton Christensen's three levels of innovation. And the first one is sustaining innovation. The second one, breakout innovation. The third one is disruptive innovation. Now, we need to get this straight. If you got a pen and then you say we got a new disruptive color, it's not disruptive. Now, disruptive is when we change the business logic. The business logic. It could be like the iTunes store where suddenly you had all of your albums, your records. You had them originally on LPs and then suddenly you had them not on vinyl, but you had them as CDs. Those of you under 40, you're wondering what the heck is he talking about? Now, CDs turned into let's not buy our music and have it in the bookshelf. Let's instead sort of buy it digitally or even subscribe to it digitally, maybe carry it around in some sort of iPod or just listen to it through your iPhone or telephone or whatever. Uh, and that changed how we look at music owning music, listening to music, the availability of music. It changed the business logic of music. So disruptive means that you actually disrupt the business logic. Now, if you have the other two, they are about sustaining, not sustainable, but sustaining innovation and breakout innovation. Sustaining innovation are the small adaptations. If I have this lovely brown pen, and then I realized that, shit, all my competitors, they're now also having this brown pen. Maybe I can do a little tweak on this. Maybe I can make the cap slightly easier to remove. Maybe I can introduce a second color or a third color, a three, three pack or something like that. Now, what I'm doing is that I'm not, not really revolutionizing the business model of pens. What I'm doing is that I'm doing tiny improvements, tiny sustaining improvements meaning they sustain your competitive edge it means that as a customer you're willing to pay the same price or even a tiny little bit more for that product or service you improve it just a little bit now the, the cool thing about this is that if I ask my team to create a disruptive innovation in leadership training now that's a big ask but if I tell them Give me two or three small improvements, small, small innovations in how we do things, what we do, you know, or maybe the, the customer demographics, whatever. Give me two or three tiny improvements that will make us 1% faster, 2% smarter, 2.5% um, cheaper. Give me those improvements, small improvements, and, and the team will respond to that. If I ask you, what's a 1% improvement you can implement tomorrow that will make you smarter, 1% smarter, or 1% faster, or 1% more agreeable, whatever. Those are the tiny incremental improvements that will keep you competitive, keep your competitive edge. And, and you see this in a lot of products. You have the classic example where you had the two blade disposable racer or the one blade disposable racer turned into two blades and then they really innovated came up with a three blade system so you had the mac 3 or whatever it was called and right now just to keep things in place uh, i'm using the i think it's a five blade system right now which is really not that innovative i'm actually using a five blade system with a lubricated aloe vera strip and some sort of protective shielding or something I guess to protect me from all those five blades. But the thing is, none of that is creating a totally new racer experience when I'm trying to do my little shaving here. Instead, it's just a tiny incremental sustaining innovation that will help me improve my value proposition to my customer. Which means that, you know, they can improve it a little bit so I as a customer will pay the price that they ask because I constantly see that, oh, now there's a new type of strip. It's uh, aloe vera and menthol. Hmm, lovely. So sustaining innovation, that's, that's the everyday small improvements that will make you competitive, that will sustain your competitive edge. Disruptive innovation, that's when you totally change the, the ballpark. It was like new business logic. You can earn a lot of money from that. You can make a lot of money. But as an organization, that's a big bet. 
it could be that you just open up the market for someone else to swoop in and get the, the, the rewards. So it's not a, a given just because you have a disruptive idea that you will actually be the one who benefits from it. In the middle, we have something called breakout innovation. Breakout innovation is when you produce something that is a sustaining innovation, but it turns out that mm, everybody loves it, and for a while I have a temporary monopoly. For example, in the mid-90s, was it, when uh, Motorola, they introduced the clamshell phone. It didn't change how we made phone calls. It was like, still, you had to da-da-da-da-da and talk like this. It didn't change any business logic, but it was really cool. And they knew that they had, what, a year, year and a half, two years? I don't remember the, the lead times back in those days, but they had a substantial amount of time before the competitors could launch their own clamshell phones. Now, when you have a temporary monopoly, you can choose between either hiking up prices and you know increasing revenue, or you can improve on your market shares. You can just crunch out that thing that you have a temporary monopoly on and just make it available and then capture market share from competitors. Now, I think I recall Motorola doing the, the latter. They, they increased their market shares. Now, uh, there are many different ways of approaching this, but these are the three different layers of innovation. Sustaining innovation, and if you're lucky, breakout innovation, and disruptive innovation. Don't mix them up. Have fun.